let's take a look at our top selections. Hi everybody, Dan Elman here with the second of two stakes races on turf at Del Mar on Sunday. Let's throw up the field for race number nine, the California Dreamin' Stakes. We're going a mile and a sixteenth on the turf. Calbred or sired runners, $150,000 is the purse. It is a very evenly matched field. You can make a case for six or seven of these horses, including the two horses on the outside. Brando, the bartender, the nine, North County guy, the ten. These are salty horses that would benefit from a little pace up front, and they might get it. We throw up the time form U.S. pace projector. Desmond Das down towards the inside should be forwardly placed. The good news for Desmond Das fans is he's very versatile. Doesn't need the lead. He can make it if they give it to him, and if they don't give it to him. He can just sit in the pocket in a really nice spot. He should work out a good trip. I think the two wound tight and the seven Galilean are going to be close to the pace, especially wound tight. who's shown good speed going two turns in the past and now stretches out. I think Kent DeZormo will have wound tight close to the pace. Let's talk a little bit about Desmond Das. This is a horse that's won his last two races, albeit on dirt, but he has run well on the turf in the past. Three starts back fourth in the Crystal Water Stakes for Calbreds. Now, I really did didn't see much of an excuse for him that day. He was beaten by Brando, the bartender. He was able to get up close to a moderate pace, and he just couldn't sprint on home. I have a feeling that while he's capable on turf, he might be slightly better on the main track. So I'm just going to keep an eye on Desmond Das right now, although the figures he's earned on turf make him a contender. The two is wound tight, and wound tight got just a beautiful prep race for this in his most recent start. He was facing open company in the Siren Lure Stakes going six and a half furlongs, and he also was running his first race in over a year. He had to have needed the race, and he was only beaten less than two lengths. A really good starting off point for this campaign. He now stretches out to an appropriate distance, very comfortable going longer, and he should be close to the pace. He might be a contender at a price. Unbridled Ethos is an interesting runner. Let's go back to his most recent start, his first start in almost a year, going six furlongs at Santa Anita. Now, he broke outward from the far outside post. He was three wide on the turn. He comes widest into the stretch, and he grinds them down late. A nice performance off of the layoff. This race, we're going to learn a lot about Unbridled Ethos. A. Is he nothing more than a closing sprinter? Because if he is, he's in trouble as he stretches out. He's raced twice at a mile and his career has been beaten both times. But since then, he's been gelded. And I personally think he can get this trip. He has enough pedigree to do so. And B, is he good enough? This is his stakes debut. From what I've seen and from what I've seen from the speed figures, Unbridled Ethos fits in this race, and he has a little bit of upside. I think that Jeff Mullins did a really nice job getting him back to the races last time out, and I'm willing to give him a chance at a decent price as he stretches out. Secret Club is the number four, and Secret Club just didn't have a good trip last time out, and an open non-winner is a one other than going a mile, and the turf got banged around out of the gate. He lost all position, and he was running on at the end to pass a couple of tired horses. Three starts back, he showed a lot more tactical speed in a race that might not have had a lot of pace. I think he's going to take back here. He's going to get some pace. He's going to come with a run. We'll find out how good Secret Club is as he steps up in class. Indian Peak is the number five, and Indian Peak has done very good work on synthetic and turf in his career. He was fourth last time out in an open stakes race at Golden Gate Fields on their synthetic surface. Two back, Indian Peak, a sharp winner. He got the right setup that day, but he was a solid winner from off of the pace. Indian Peak has won five times in his career. He is listed as a first-time gelding for this start. He's also first-time Peter Miller. There are a lot of things to like about this horse. He has hidden form. He won the Snow Chief going long on the turf back in 2020. Warden Jerry is the number six. He's been around for a long time, and he was likely overmatched in the San Juan Capistrano last time out, going a mile and three quarters. He's very comfortable at that distance. Turning back shouldn't work too much against him. He has plenty of class. He won the San Luis Rey in 2020. He was beaten the neck in the Hollywood Gold Cup the year before that. And it looks like he's still firing at age eight. Second start of the form cycle for Warden Jerry, another horse that's likely to be rallying. 
from far off of the pace. Galilean is the number seven. Let's take a look at Galilean's most recent turf race. Two starts back going five and a half furlongs at Santa Anita. This is the California flag handicap. Galilean's first race with blinkers, and he showed a lot of speed despite cutting back in distance. He got right up close to the pace. He's very game to win. The fourth place horse came back to win a state bred stake on Tapita, I believe, at Golden Gate with a 99 buyer speed figure. Galilean has always shown a good amount of ability. He's a stakes winner on dirt. He's a stakes winner on turf. Maybe the blinkers will rejuvenate Galilean. He has the talent to win this race, and stretching out will not be a problem. He's going to find a good forward position under Joe Bravo. Margot's boy is making his second start off of a layoff. He was a good second last time out when the beaten favorite at Los Alamitos. His turf races might actually be a little bit better than dirt. So that last race we could view as a prep. And the race two starts back going three quarters of a mile. Maybe that distance was just a little bit short. This horse was good enough to be second in the Del Mar Derby last summer, a grade two race behind a really solid horse in Pixelate. He has running lines that indicate he can win, and he might move forward in his second start of the form cycle. Brando, the bartender, is the number nine. He's seeking his ninth lifetime victory. He was fourth last time out on dirt. I've always felt that Brando, the bartender, is a turf horse. Let's go back to his race two starts back. They cut him all the way back to five-eighths at Golden Gate in the Albany, and he is going to rally strongly to finish second. The beaten favorite this day. His last two turf races against California breads have resulted in stakes victories. One sprinting, one going a middle distance. He really fits at this level, and he's likely going to get the right pace set up. I like that Rispoli is back aboard. He's going to come with a strong kick. And completing the field is the 10 North County guy, who finished second behind Brando the bartender as the favorite in the Crystal Water last time out. Now, he's going to have to deal with a three-month layoff or so, he worked out a good trip in the, in the uh, Crystal Water. He saved ground. He came out with a chance. Brandon Bartan thought it was just better than he was that day. He's earned some really strong speed figures. He's very capable at this class level. The distance isn't a problem. Let's see if he can work out a trip from the far outside post. This is a very, very competitive race. You can make a case again, as I said in the open, for several, which means I want to go with a little bit of a price. I'm curious if Unbridled Ethos is good enough to win this race going long for the first time uh, against stakes horses. A second off the layoff, though, a promising return effort off of a lengthy benching, and Unbridled Ethos to me is just going to be the right price. I think he has the right combination of upside potential and price potential. He's my top pick in here. I'm going to go 3, 10, 1, and 7 in the California Dreamin'. Two stakes races at Del Mar on Sunday. Good luck.